Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Rempel, Paralympian keynote speaker and creator of the Resilience Toolbox. And in this video, I'm gonna chat with you about how to focus while working alone. Let's get into it. So one of the biggest challenges that we're all facing today is while working from home, trying to stay motivated, trying to uh, keep our momentum and foster some sense of accountability in some ways, if we don't necessarily have somebody beside us, uh, you know, to keep us in check or somewhere or something to be accountable to. And so staying focused while working from home can be very difficult. And when I was uh, finished playing sport in the Paralympics in uh, 2015, became a full-time entrepreneur, you know, creating some focus on my own, you know, pre-pandemic world, that alone in itself was challenging. And I, to this day, or as of today, uh, I no longer have my roommate as well who would um, kind of just keep me on point because I could look over and see somebody else doing something that would just make me think, well, if, if he's working, I need to be working too. And we don't, we've kind of lost that while we're working in a virtual world and working from home on our own a lot these days. So what I want to do in this video is I want to share with you five tips about how to focus while working from home. Let's get into it. Tip number one is to turn off your notifications. Now, this might sound a little bit out of uh, your comfort zone to remove the red dots that are always popping up on your screen or when a notification drops down from the top of your phone. But if we remove the notifications, we can start to learn how to respond to messages when we decide to rather than reacting every single time that something pops up on our screen. And so if we want to focus what are some like what is something simple we can turn off the notifications on our phone uh, there's a lot of email programs that have features where you can like pause your inbox so that emails stop coming in for you to focus on tackling what is in front of you at the moment you can send them out and some will allow responses to come in only for those messages that you've sent out while your inbox is paused but simply turning off your notifications will give you some space that you're not going to be reacting to everything that comes in so you can be responsive and start to focus on your work. Tip number two is to put your phone on silent. Now this builds on turning off notifications. Maybe you wanna turn off notifications and keep your phone on or on vibrate because you may not be able to not answer the phone every single day. However, could you just keep your phone on silent so that again, you're looking at that when you choose to, to respond to something, not Re not reacting every single time that something comes in. Now, if you've turned off your notifications, chances are you're not gonna be having um, a lot of um, reasons to, that your phone will um, be requiring your attention unless you do get a phone call. But I know there's periods of time where I wanna work and I don't even wanna re receive a phone call, but I want my phone to be available to not just go directly to voicemail maybe, or maybe sometimes silent does send it to voicemail. But the Idea being that you choose when you look at your phone. So if you can put your phone on silent while you're working, people can still message you, but you're choosing when you want to go into that versus allowing it to signal a sound or a vibration to constantly distract you. Tip number three is to practice a 50 minute sprint. Now I got this tip from a coach I followed, Taki Moore, and he talks about 50 minute sprints being um, a metric for us to just measure our progress by, of course, and kind of put the pressure on a little bit tighter from a, what would normally be a 60 minute window. And so not only do you tighten the amount of time that you set to accomplish a given task, but you also essentially kind of reward yourself with a 10 minute break to go do something else and disconnect before you start your next task. And so that 10 minutes might be that the time that you check your phone to respond to some messages quickly. It might be, maybe you can go browse social media for that 10 minutes and then you want to get off again. Or even better is to do something like step outside, get some fresh air, go for a walk, do some stretches, you know, do something in that 10 minutes to reward yourself for the effort you put in in that 50 minute sprint to make up the full hour before you begin your next task. Tip number four is to go analog. Now here, here's something I want to share with you. This is again, another tip I got from Taki Moore that's extremely helped me a lot, it's extremely helpful, is to use this product called a time timer. And what's cool about this is if you go analog, 
it doesn't require you to have your phone on all the time and you can set a visual representation like I just talked about the 50 minute sprints you can set a visual rep representation about how much time you've got lot left and you'll see this uh, countdown and try to remember which way this is gonna look and it's silent it's it's completely silent. there's no ticking there's nothing um, you can set on the back a sound if you want the timer to a ding and go off at the end or if you just want it to be silent when it's over but if you go analog, what I find is when I put this right at the base of my desktop computer when I'm working, is that now I've got an, a visual representation. My phone is, my notifications are off, it's on silent. Even better, I could put it in my computer drawer or put it in a different room. And then in order to focus, all I'm doing is looking at my time timer and the visual representation of how much time I've got left with no sound for me to focus and get my work done. Tip number five is to leverage music. I never used to be one that wanted to work with music because I'll get too distracted thinking about the lyrics. And I know for some people they can only work with music um, and maybe you can't yourself. But what I wanna do is share with you uh, a tool that I found following Dan Martel. Um, as he talked about his uh, struggle with ADHD is that he uses a website called focusatwill.com. I discovered this website just recently and I've now, I now use it like religiously every single day because the music is designed scientifically to help you focus. There are different channels you can pick from. I prefer listening to Alpha Chill, it's called, Gentle Funky Beats, but there's other ones called Up Tempo, Classical Plus, Electro Bach, um, Acoustal Plus, Focus Spa, and there's there's so many more. There's, there's way more than that even, but this music is designed to help you focus. And if you were to pair this music, what I do is if you repair this music with all the other strategies discussed, turning off notifications, putting your phone on silent, doing a 50 minute sprint, using a time timer, going analog, and then the focus at will music for 50 minutes where you can set a timer on the website as well for it to ding just like this will at the end of your session is that I find this to be extremely helpful to focus when you're on your own. You've got a deadline, you've got no distractions, and you've got tools to help you stay focused in the moment and get your work done. Highly recommend you check out focusatwill.com. Okay, so as a quick recap, number one, turn off your notifications. Number two, put your phone on silent. Tip number three, do a 50 minute sprint. Tip number four, go analog using the time timer. And tip number five is to leverage music. So if you'd like to learn more, I encourage you to check out kevinremple.com toolbox, where you can discover more of the tips and strategies inside of the resilience toolbox, where I help both individuals and organizations develop a resilient mindset to continue to show up and every single day, keep focusing on small things that make a big difference in order to become a hero in your own movie. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.